Hello everyone, this is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Crusader Kings 2 in our Lord of the Scots series. So last episode was kind of rough. Things were going well, but then out of nowhere, uh, our wife died. So we're now betrothed to another 12-year-old. We're 33, but she's a genius, so we kind of need to have a strong character that can give our kids good traits. Looks like our other son died of pneumonia as well. My son Alistair is not exerting himself in his studies. I'm starting to despair. Talk to him about being diligent. Oh, good, he gained diligent. All right, so Alistair, despite the fact that he's weak, so that's good news in spite of everything. Um, our primary heir is a weak character, unfortunately. Let's take a look at the inheritance laws, shall we? Duke Billy, our cousin, is currently... set up as our heir but he's not that really that great anymore so we're gonna go with Alistair who's a weak character but we've just set him up as our heir and he has a really strong opinion of us now because we just made him the heir but I mean he's, he's doing well he's, he's a good kid so I think he deserves it we also the last episode was also rough because you know I, I tried to press this weak claim that I had and I was thinking Okay, well, in the past when I've played on, like, when I've played as Ireland, and I've tried to help press weak claims for certain characters, maybe because I wasn't the Kingdom of Ireland yet or something like that, um, you know, it, it resulted in nothing happening, you know, and the, the territory not being, um, the territory not being, oh wait, hang on, I can declare war. So I've got another character who I can press the claim for. But again, it looks like he would take this title and he wouldn't he wouldn't be our vassal anymore. It's the same thing. I just the whole thing with pressing claims and how you can fight a war and then all of a sudden you win it and just kidding it's not part of your territory. I do not understand those mechanics. It does not make sense to me. Maybe it's just my the total war player in me that just is trying to paint the map and it's like I just conquered that. Why do I what why why is it not there? Um, but again, as I mentioned in the last episode, apparently you can help certain characters achieve a title for political gain, which is very nuanced and crazy and you if you paid close attention and you knew when it would be advantageous for that character to assume the throne in a neighboring realm you can do that it doesn't give you uh direct power but it might give you power in terms of uh, additional influence or possibly you know eroding the military threat from nearby influences whatever you know I, i'm just making things up i don't quite understand the mechanic but i'm thinking that's what they're going for so, yeah, it's just, there's a lot. Uh, it's, it's the year 900 now, at least, which is nice. We're going to hold a feast. And all my vassals will be there. The traveling dancers first danced for us, and while dancing to a fast and glad tune, which made me want, which made me want to dance, invited everyone to join them. I danced until I panted and my face was red. Then I had to sit down and rest for a while, watching the dancers and the courtiers having more fun than in a long time. I'd like to hire you for my feast. More entertainment, very good. I very rarely read those. Spend lavishly on food. We haven't had anyone said no to a feast. Oh. Well, you're a jerk. <laughs> That's our first no in like three or four feasts. Scottish culture is also doing quite well. There's this solid chunk of Scottish culture that's arrived now, so it's slowly spreading throughout Scotland. Scotland is actually becoming Scottish. <laughs> Their skills are fascinating but unsettling. Right, so, had another character liking the acrobats. Every time I reject one of the desirable women who throws themselves in my way, the others increase their efforts. Do they wish for me to burn in hell? How is the unchaste? I think she was our wife when we assumed the throne, and we've had her imprisoned. She doesn't appear to have any claims of any kind. 
mainly because her father is still alive. So we need her to stay alive for a bit longer. Because she, again, we married her to potentially get a claim on Cornwall a while back. And I haven't been paying much attention to that, but that is a possible thing. If one of her parents dies and she gets a claim, I can then just execute her in prison. And then Alistair will inherit the claim and we can press that and take control of Cornwall. Every time I reject one of the desirable women. Okay, I will not give in to temptation. Vassal levies raised for too long. Oh yeah, we fought that that pointless war for for Northumberland, and the vassals are still pissed at us over it. Understandably so. It was pointless. You can be pissed at me this time. I completely understand. Earl Garon was introduced by a mutual friend, and we talked for quite a while. We had our differences and a few arguments. Then we found common safe ground, and I began enjoying myself. Earl Garon seems like a decent person. I would mind talking to him some more. Looks like some raiders are still sailing around the area. Yeah, they, so they've landed in a couple of places. Let's pay him a visit. Alright, so we're going to give this army... Hopefully we'll catch them. Nope. They got away. Of course they did. Goodbye. Starting to learn the hotkeys a little bit more. Keyboard shortcuts. Which is handy. Alright, is it the 14th of September? Is it... Uh, oh, it's too late to hold a summer fair. Should have held a summer fair. There's still the possibility I could get Gregarious. And that would be good. King Talor is already a great character. We could add more virtues to his... To his hand. He's seriously a very good character. I do not understand, though. Two things. First of all, why medium crown authority is taking so much effort to pass. I don't. I don't get it. These these characters are the ones that are opposed to medium crown authority. So maybe if I just send them gifts. I mean, I've got a lot of money, so I, I may as well send some money to these people. And see if that will make them more likely. I, I don't know that it will, but I'm, I, I've, again, I've got the money, I'm going to try it. I think that's mostly everyone. I don't think I sent anything to this guy. No, I didn't. All right. Now let's see what happens. Still at 22. Up, oh, 24, 26. Okay. Was that it? Was th I think that's it. I think we just passed it. So that's what we need to do. We need to sweet talk the people who opposed it. All right. So we now have medium crown authority and vassals can no longer fight each other. But check it out. We now have... A minus five vassal opinion bonus across the land. So now our vassals all dislike us a little bit more. Essentially because we, I mean, the we just took more power. It, it was a power play. Like, we, we now have more power uh, under the crown. All right, we're going to appoint a new steward because our current steward sucks and has sucked for a long time. Our current chancellor doesn't suck, but he, 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 he sucks at the same time. It's a paradox. It's an oxymoron. He's both at the same time. It's it's Schrodinger's chancellor is what this mess is. Because he's he's got 24 diplomacy. Okay? He's supposed to be able to fabricate claims on duchies. I've had him here in... What's this? Mercia? Trying to fabricate this for, like, decades. And before him, there was another chancellor who once had a similar score, who I also was trying to get to fabricate claims. And it's not working. 
It's just not working. He's not he's not doing anything. Let's unpause and let things happen. Alright, so I need to make sure I hold the summer fair this year. Alright, so another argument. We still won't speak to each other. That's fine. My liege, I have collected a tithe in Gowrie. This money should reach you together with this letter. Your humble steward, Prince, Prince Bishop Arthur of Lothian. Thank you. All right, so pretty soon we'll be able to hold. We'll be able to hold the summer fair. How old is our betrothed? She's fourteen. So in a couple years we'll be able to get married again, and hopefully have another child. Prince Farquhar, Count Farquhar, even of Balloon, who inherited that title from his mother. So is that actually in our domain? No, his liege. Okay, so our son is actually not even in our territory. He in he inherited this territory from uh, his mother, and now his liege is the king of France. Okie dokie. It's complicated. Like I said, Crusader Kings is, is the kind of game, I've, I've said this many times, uh, Crusader Kings is the kind of game that you can play for hundreds of hours and not understand all the tiny little detailed mechanics. Which is amazing, in one sense. But in other senses, it's like... What, I'll be honest, one of the reasons I bought Crusader Kings 2, one of the reasons it really convinced me was when I found out, and this is not going to surprise longtime followers of my channel, when I found out that uh, there was a... a expansion pack called the Legacy of Rome that allowed you, as the Byzantine Empire to reconquer Roman land and reform the Roman Empire and then import that save into a Europa Universalis 4 game through which is where I or play through which is where I originally found out about it um about the Roman Empire being in these games and uh I was like oh that's really cool cuz it Europa Universalis 4 goes all the way up to like the 19th century before it cuts off so I'm I'm like heck yeah I would love to play that uh, there's just one problem. The games are so freaking complicated that if you're trying to play as the Byzantines, you have to be really good. You have to have, as I've commented in the past, as someone else commented and gave this phrase to me, you have to have a thousand eyes. And when you're feeling like a really in-depth, rich strategy experience, that's awesome. But the difficulty settings in Crusader Kings don't allow for there to be a simpler experience that allows you to just have a more... Uh, dare I say it, risk-like or Total War-like map painting experience where you're just branching out with your territory and doing cool things. It's, for an unexperienced player, inexperienced player, it's virtually impossible to reform the Roman Empire, which is a shame, <laughs> you know, in, in a certain sense. It should be challenging to reform the Roman Empire because it's historically very unlikely. But at the same time, like, it's fun. Don't make it so hard, you know? Um, or at least provide an option. To where it could be easier. I think that's a very healthy compromise between the don't make it so hard argument and the it should be hard argument. Give people a choice. Um, all right, let's see. You should invest in a technological advance. Yeah, we're going to improve heavy infantry's power. So they're stronger now. This Chancellor is still just dicking around. <laughs> I don't know what he is doing, but it's... Okay, so looks like Fife has converted to Scottish culture, which is good. So at least that's interesting. Again, should be happening more and more. A lot of these provinces have been slowly converting. You can see now there's actually a label saying that certain territories are definitely Scottish. So we've got a lot of Irish culture here, a lot of Irish culture there. Prince Alistair of Scotland is now of legal age. He became a charismatic negotiator. Wow. Extra fertility, because again, charismatic negotiation skills. Uh, a lot more diplomacy. Minus one marshal, and he's already weak, which means minus one marshal as well. So that's not good. Uh, but he's, he's a very good diplomat. So that's excellent. And he's our heir. 
So we need to make sure we have a marriage for him set up. So let's see. Genius. Okay, no geniuses. Strong. Very good. We got some strong characters. Adelmode, who's a courtier in Vienne, who is already of age. She's 22. Uh, she's a pretty good character. And she's, yeah, of course she's strong. That's what I looked for. And this character is 12. Let's go ahead and go with this one. So he's going to lose some prestige from this, but we're going to go with it. We need to continue having kids. We need to build up our dynasty. I accept your suggestion that they get married. All right, so they're married. He still has plenty of prestige. Oh, okay, we've got some some relatively... I shouldn't have said anything about the raiders, should I? I, sh I should have just kept my mouth shut. I was holding... D oh, I was holding down shift, not control. All right, that explains why this is happening. All right, let's change our view here so we can have a view of Scottish territory. There we go. There we go. And we're going to move these guys down here to Ossery. Actually, no, we're going to move them to Kildare. And you guys are going to head up to Ossery. All right, so we won that battle. I'm going to go ahead and just disband these troops. We have additional troops heading down to fight off these raiders. Oh, wait, the big army left. Big surprise. And the other armies are leaving too. Big surprise. We are once again going to kind of ignore the unlanded sun's warning. Okay, so pretty soon we'll be able to hold a summer fair. As a devoted hunter, I have filled my castle with many trophies from the wild beasts I have hunted and killed myself. Still, there is a place above my fireplace waiting for a special trophy, the head of a white heart. So basically, I could lose a skillful hunter might step forward. Ah. I'll lose some prestige. I don't think anything happened. Oh, cool. I could never have done it without Prince Bishop Arthur's hunting skills. After several days looking for trails and dropping, we finally find a clear track. The white heart seemed to wait for my arrow and merely shivered when it pierced its heart. So we gained an additional martial point. Go ahead and disband that army. Or that levy, rather. Hey, more raiders. Who's excited? Kill. Kill. Oh, they're going to get there about the same time. That was pretty good timing. I did not do that on purpose. <laughs> Should not have said anything about the raiders being gone, because they're back. Chancellor, are you ever going to do anything in Warwick? Or do I have to replace you again? At this point, I want to put the old Chancellor back. Just give him his job back. Or let Alistair do it, because Alistair, Alistair's a weak character. But his diplomacy skill is almost as good as these guys. It just completely blows my mind that this guy is just sitting in Warwick. Not even... He hasn't even fabricated a claim on the county. What's your deal? What, what are your percentage chances? It's basically a 1 in 5 chance every year. Now, how many years have gone by? More than 5. More than 10. More than 15, frankly. And this guy is just not... He's just, he's just not. <laughs> he's just... Just not. My beloved daughter Marjorie is concerned she's still not married. I'll find her someone nice. Pick up 
Betrothed can marry. Excellent. So Cecilia Abinid, who is a genius, will now be our wife. She doesn't have any bad traits or anything like that. The friend of a friend is my friend, a motto I try to live by, and sometimes that is an easy truth. A friend of a friend was introduced, and I immediately felt a kind of connection with this stranger, I, so I hope we'll be friends. Okay, that's nice. Thank you. Uh, let's hold a feast. I missed the summer fair event somehow. Oh, hello. Perfect entertainment for the feast. What's going on here? I thought we had high crown authority. I don't know why there are... Or medium crown authority. I don't know why there are random revolts happening. You must perform a feast. I'm not used to seeing this above certain levels of crown authority. So this is... I'm not, I don't know what's happening right here. Invitations are being sent. Meanwhile, armies are building up to fight off these guys. Yeah, what's happening here? So, okay, this is what's happening. Duke Billy is attempting to revoke Argyll. So we can offer to support that. And he's trying to revoke it from Earl Caradag. So we could offer to join the war against, so we could basically side with them if we wanted to. I'm not going to. But what's happening, the vassals are not challenging each other. There's just a, um, a duke was trying to manage his territory, and one of the vassals was like, screw you, no, you can't take my title. And now they're fighting. So it's not quite the same. Even though it sounds the same. <laughs> It's not a vassal trying to conquer another vassal in the same way. It's not about. It's not someone trying to gain power. It's just someone trying to. Um, well, I'm not sure what the AI's reasoning for for trying to remove that title would be. But it's different. I promise. Arranged marriage, sure. All right. So all of these raiders are chickening out. As per usual. I've come to expect that from raiders. We're going to be able to hold a summer fair very soon. Just seriously, we're, we're just waiting on you to do something, Chancellor. Maybe because the Chancellor is a lunatic, that's having some effect. Hang on. He's possessed. This character experiences frequent violent episodes, speaking in tongues, spitting and assaulting those nearby as if possessed by evil spirits. So he has better personal combat, but he's less attractive. But that shouldn't stop him from doing his chancellery duties. Shouldn't stop. Would you kindly end your plot? trying to kill Earl Gilbride of Northumberland. Thank you. Appreciate that. A son was born to Prince Alistair of Scotland, an Edelmode Wolferson named Macbeth. He is strong! His name is Macbeth and he is strong! Oh, that's awesome! He's got plus two martial. He is high in diplomacy. He's fertile. He's healthy. Better combat skill. He's attractive. Uh, and vassals will be... Any of his vassals will be strong, um, or, or will, will like him a lot, and especially tribal vassals, but we don't have tribal vassals, so that is fantastic. So we've had a grandson, and he's great. So we're going to try to raise him ourselves, either as um, King Talor, or as... Um, hang on. Let's set him a special interest. Let's keep an eye on him. All right, let's see, a message about form alliance. No, decline. 
I don't want an alliance. We've had this discussion. We've had it multiple times. We'll tell you what, on that... Really? Again? No. Go away. <laughs> I think that was actually someone different, but whatever. They looked almost exactly the same, and I don't want any alliances regardless. So, Because I'll get sucked into wars with other characters, and I'm really... I just want to claim on Mercia. That's all I'm really asking for. And hang on, let's see how things are going with... All right, she looks like she's aging. She's 52. Um, who knows what will happen with these strong claims when they get passed down. All of her... I mean, this child is of my dynasty. He's my kinsman. So if he, if he inherits the claim, I mean, theoretically... Theoretically, I should be able to... To, to take it but I like I've like happened with Northumbria I don't quite know if that's the case and I'm not in a position right now to have you guys tell me because again I'm recording this way in advance because I'm I'm uh I'm out of town as of the moment you're watching this so yeah fun times thanks very much for watching if you enjoyed the episode don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're not already i upload new episodes in lord of the scots every day at noon eastern daylight time which is gmt minus four for those of you not in the states and if lord of the scots is over when you're watching this it'll be something else in kind of a grand strategy or historical strategy type of vibe so stay tuned for that if you enjoy this sort of game and this sort of experience you might not be the biggest Crusader Kings 2 fan, or you might not be the biggest Total War fan for that matter, uh, which is something else I played a lot on the channel. But later in the year, well, again, if you're watching this in the backlog, what I'm talking about in terms of temporal differences is, is not not going to be very meaningful. But later in the year, there's going to be a lot of Civilization 6, which I'm so excited about. Um, and also, I'm still trying to find a place to fit in some Stellaris gameplay, so you never know. Those are just some examples of other stuff that might be in the, the uh, content slot after this series and after things like eternal empire are over and things like that but anyway again thanks very much for watching comments are always welcome and i'll see you in a bit